eventually the hydrogen fuel, so to speak, is converted into helium and the star either collapses or the helium is fused together to make other elements. Thus you have the beginning of heavier elements. Hydrogen being the light element with one proton. I suppose helium has two protons. Perhaps two neutrons. I don't know, but it's heavier. I'm going to show you how Einstein is bogus. Stars form hydrogen fuses eventually eventually the star collapses for lack of fuel implodes and then explodes in an event referred to as a nova or a nova stella new star we call it a new star when we see a flash in the sky of an explosion a flash far away we detect for a few days and it's gone it's called a new star that is a star that explodes when it runs out of fuel the process produces heavy elements such as uranium I'm going to show you how Einstein is bogus I mentioned gravity now we have uranium. When uranium is refined, purified, concentrated, and a small amount of this concentrated, purified uranium is hit with a neutron, a fast, fast neutron, the neutron will split the atom in two halves. And in the process, a couple of neutrons are liberated as well, which go on and split other uranium or plutonium atoms creating uh, an exponential chain reaction instantaneously in a split second releasing a lot of energy no protons are destroyed and no neutrons are destroyed mass is not converted into energy I'm going to show you how Einstein is bogus if it weren't for Einstein, you suppose, we wouldn't have the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb has nothing to do with Einstein. All we're doing is splitting heavy elements which were created in the core of a star that exploded. These heavy elements are composed of positively charged protons surrounded by negatively charged electrons making a, a, like a spring-loaded contraption that if split releases the energy. When an atomic bomb explodes it releases heat and light. Heat and light. Heat and light have no mass. Light has no mass. Photons have no mass. Electrons have no mass. All the mass of an atom, whether it's helium, hydrogen, uranium, is located in the protons or neutrons in the core of the atom. That's where the mass is. No mass is converted into energy. The energy released by, by fission splitting the atom is the same energy that was put there by the gravity gravity of that star the tremendous mass of a star produces tremendous compressional forces in the core of that star star that's how these massive spring-loaded heavy elements are created the atomic bomb 
produces power by releasing this energy that was stored there long ago when the Nova Stella imploded, creating uranium, lead, iron, carbon, oxygen, other things. This has nothing to do with Einstein. Einstein is bogus. Einstein had nothing to do with the atomic bomb. Yet people assume there's a connection between Einstein and the atomic bomb. The only connection that I'm aware of is that Einstein sent a letter to Roosevelt saying that Nazi Germany was working on an atomic bomb and we had better get started working on an atomic bomb so that we could beat them to it. But just previous to sending that letter, Einstein had said that it's very unlikely that we can release energy from the nucleus of an atom. He didn't believe it was possible or likely. He had nothing to do with building the atomic bomb, and the atomic bomb is basically hitting a massive nucleus with a speeding neutron causing it to split. And the energy that's released is the energy that was put there by the supernova long ago. Everything else uh, Einstein dealt with, time travel, time dilution, bending of light by gravity, uh, everything else he dealt with is vague, useless, insignificant, trivial, does not apply to day-to-day, -to -day, everyday experiences. Time dilution, for example, an astronaut would have to travel as fast as he could, which is about 17,500 miles per hour, which is about 5 miles per second. 5 miles per second. 5, remember 5 miles per second. Compare that to the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. Compare those two numbers, 5 with 186,000 and you get the idea that light moves significantly faster than any astronaut. And an astronaut is not likely to ever, 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 ever approach anywhere near the speed of light. Therefore, all the BS about speed of light and time travel and time dilution and contraction of length and all this mumbo jumbo, uh, it not only cannot be tested, and, and I don't believe it has been tested. I don't believe it has been proven. There are people that claim it's been proven, but it is irrelevant, it is trivial, and it doesn't apply to everyday life. Maybe if you are dealing with subatomic particles, and maybe if you're dealing with the entire galaxy and galaxies beyond our galaxy, there might be a few people who might be somewhat interested in Einstein's goofy ideas. They are not practical. They are not useful. They do not refute Newton. Newton, the guy who came up with an explanation of gravity, the guy who supposedly saw the apple fall from the tree, Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, a long time ago, Newton's ideas have not been refuted. Newton's ideas are still very applicable, can be used to plan space trips, put a man on the moon and so on, uh, trajectories of uh, projectiles, moving objects. It's all, it all works. It's all useful. Einstein made no meaningful, useful contribution. His ideas are mumbo jumbo fantasy cannot be proven. They don't apply to anything. They're useless. So why are there so many people in the world who appear to worship and defend Einstein? It's like a cult. It's a cult. Admit it. 